بعد اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم وما امر اللہ لیا عبد اللہ مخلصین اللہ الدین بعد اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم فمن کان یرجو لقاء ربه فلیعمل عملا صالحا ولا یشرک بی عبادت ربه احدا بعد اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم وَلَا تَخْشَهُ النَّاسَ وَخْشَوْنِ وَلَا تَشْتَرُوا بِآیَاتِ سَمَنًا قَلِيلًا بعد اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم قُلْ اِنَّ السَّلَاةِ وَنُسُكِ وَمَحْيَایَا وَمَمَاتِ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ رَبِّ شْرَحْ لِي صَدْرِ وَيَسِّرْ لِي أَمْرِ وَحْلُ الْاُقْتَتَمْ مِن لِسَانِ يَفْقَهُ قَوْلِ وَعَرِنَ الْبَاطِلَ بَاطِلَمْ وَرْذُقْنَ اجْتِنَابَ آمین یا رب العالمین My respected brothers and my sisters The subject today inshallah in next 25 minutes I want to talk This is the most important subject as far as our final destiny is concerned our hisab, our reckoning, our accountability on the day of judgment. The point which I will discuss today is about ikhlas in our niya, purity of intention, the importance of purity of intention. Because Imam Bukhari, rahmatullah alayhi, in Sahih Bukhari, the very first hadith is إِنَّمَ الْآمَالُ بِالنِّيَاد Our amal will depend, their reward will depend on our intention. Abu Musa al-Ashari رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ says in one of the hadiths that one time Prophet Muhammad صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم came on the pulpit and he gave the khutbah and addressed us and said be watchful of shirk and sahaba asked ya rasulullah what do you mean by shirk he said shirk of riya shirk of showing off and he says prophet muhammad sallallahu said that it creeps in so subtle more subtle than ant can creep in so that you will not even notice that this riya will come and will cause you know impurity in your intention in another hadith prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi says be watchful of shirk azgar and sahaba asked ya rasulullah what is shirk azgar he said shirk azgar is riya showing off doing things for somebody other than allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so this is my topic inshallah today you know brothers this riya comes in such a subtle way that sometimes you have to watch you have to look for it imam rajab rahmatullah alayh has said purity of intention is that whenever you want to do any deed you have in your mind that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching me. Imam Askalani, you know, in one of the narration, he said, somebody asked him, you know, everybody talks about ikhlas in niya, but what really it means? And he gave a very beautiful example. He said, have you seen a shepherd when he is in the middle of desert and the salah time comes? And he makes his intention of salah. Do you think he will be worried about what his sheep and cows and goats will be thinking about him? Will he expect any appreciation from all the animals he has in his flock? The man said, no, he will not. He said, this is the purity of intention. When you are among people, you will not care about their reaction, their appreciation. 
rather you will care about appreciation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam Hatim rahmatullah alayhi says that it took me eight years with my sheikh to make sure that my intention is correct whenever I am doing any deed. Sufyan Suri rahmatullah alayhi he says out of all the actions I have done the most difficult thing which was for me to control was controlling the intention keeping it pure for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Imam Rajab said whatever Allah has given you Allah has given you your mal Allah has given you your intellect Allah has given you your youth Allah has given you whatever he has given you if you use that to seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is the purity of intention my brothers and, and my sisters why is it so important to have purity in our intention you know diamond why diamond has so much value because of the clarity because of the transparency because that peace more clear clarity will be in the diamond more flawless will the piece of diamond will be it will have more value that's why in one of the hadith prophet muhammad sallallahu says that the intention of a mu'min has more reward is more powerful than the action itself if you have purity of intention even a small deed can have a major big reward so our intentions if they are pure for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah is not looking for big actions from us let me give you one example here there was a Sheikh Mahaddis when he passed away somebody saw him in a dream that Sheikh that Sheikh what happened said you know I was forgiven somebody is asking him in, in the dream that of course you were the Mahaddis so it was already you know guaranteed that you will be forgiven he said no not because of all the work I did rather because of the work that I was writing one day the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and I have my pen in my hand and when I was trying to get some ink and as soon as I came out of the pot of ink, the fly came, sat on my pen. And I stopped, paused. So this fly can, if this fly is thirsty, I will allow this fly to drink from that ink. I took care of makhluk of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just because of my that action had forgiven me. So our intention has more reward than really our actions, my brothers and my sisters. Let me give you some practical points. How will I know that whatever I am doing, I am doing it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are four criteria. The very first criteria is when I am doing something the only intention in my heart is that I want to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nobody but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second condition, my brothers and my sisters, is whenever I will finish that action, then I will feel humility, humbleness, ajizi, inkisari in myself inkisari and ajzi and humility of thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has given me tawfiq to do that action it's opposite of what we have seen in ourselves these days when we do something good we will we feel proud of ourselves but the action if it is done for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the second you know reflection you will see after the action you will find yourself more humble you will find more in kisari number third thing is that you will not rush in things if you are doing it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching for me for this action 
when I am doing something for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you will not see any rush. Rather, I will take my time. Because hastiness is the sign of shaitan. But if I am doing it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I will take my time to finish it. Number four, which is the most important, that after I will finish that good deed, I will be worried and concerned whether this action will be accepted in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or not. I will not take it for granted that I have prayed for so many years or I have done such and such good deed for so many years then I am, you know, guaranteed for Jannah. No. He will always have this fear in his heart whether my deeds are accepted or not. What are the signs that I should, I will know that this is Riya what I am doing. There are three signs for that. If I am doing any action and if these three things are present there, that means that what I am doing is, is doing not for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but seeking pleasure of the human being. Number one, my brothers and my sisters, when I will be among people, I will be very active. Urdu mein kehte hain ke jab jalwat mein chust aur khalwat mein sust. When he is among people, he is very active. MashaAllah, praying, fasting, talking nice, very active. But when he is by himself, he acts like a lazy person. His salah is different when he is among people. But when he is by himself in his home, his salah is different. Number second, if people will praise him, he will feel more energized and he want to continue what he is doing as long as people are praising him, appreciating him. And the third sign, as soon as somebody, you know, discourages him, as soon as somebody criticizes him, he is ready to give up that action. My brothers and my sisters, if I am doing anything for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no matter what anybody will say, I will never give up that action. If I am ready to give up, that means that I am not doing it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, rather I am doing it for somebody else. You know, I want to share with you few benefits of having pure intention for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we do any action. Number one benefit, that person will always be alert, conscious, God conscious. He will always be vigilant. He will always be very careful in his action. So that person will be alert, vigilant and careful and conscious. Number two, Wallahi, this is the key to happiness. Key to happiness. Most of our life, we are worried about what people will say. All our life, we struggle to keep everybody around us happy. We do things to make people happy and to keep people happy. All our life, this is the struggle. But if you are mukhlis towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you want to do actions for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you want to spend every second of your life just for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you will be mughni, you will be carefree, you will be free person from all these shackles and chains of what people will say. So that person will be the happiest person on the planet, my brothers and my sisters. The third thing, which is the most important thing, Allah never leaves alone the person who has pure intention for him. Allah will hold his hand. Allah will never humiliate him. Allah will never let him down in this dunya. My brothers, Akhra is for him. But even in this dunya, Allah will hold his hand 
Allah will inshallah give him izza, waqar, muqam. So that is another benefit my brothers and my sisters having pure intention towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know in my conclusion of my khutbah, I will share with you one story. That story I want to relate with the conclusion of khutbah. You know one time few friends they were in Pakistan. One of them was complaining about his earning, his family financial situation. And when he was complaining, he saw his boss passing by. And the boss addressed that man that, listen, there is a 50,000 rupee voucher I have seen for you. Please go to the accountant and get your 50,000. He goes, rushes towards the accountant and when he reaches to the counter and says my 50,000 voucher, the accountant shows him, here is your voucher, but there is a stamp, paid off. This was already paid off. This was already given to you. Wallahi, on that day, when you and me are expecting the actions I have done in my life, the salah I was praying all my life, the psalm I was fasting all my life, the charity I had given all my life, and I was expecting the reward on that day, but when I will reach to the counter, the angels will say, it's paid off. You were looking for reward from dunya, because reward, appreciation, is a ajar, is a ujra. So if I am expecting ajar from people, all my actions are rewarded in this dunya. So when I will reach to the counter, angel will say, Oh, on you, that you sold yourself for very cheap. You worked so hard. You were going for prayer, sacrificing so many things, waking up for fajr. Winter time making wudu when it was difficult, going for hajj. Abdullah bin Mubarak rahmatullah says there are people, they go for hajj and they are holding the ghilaf of Kaaba, but they are doing riya in Khusran. Khusran is far away from Makkah. The people ask Abdullah bin Mubarak, how come person is in Makkah holding ghilaf of Kaaba, how come he is doing riya? show off in Khusran. He said when he is holding the ghilaf of Kaaba, the thought he has in mind, I wish the people of my village, people of Khusran, my family member can see me in this, in this condition. My brothers and my sisters, that's why on the day of Akhirah, on the day of Akhirah, do you know who will go first in the hell? Not Zani, not murderer, not Kafir. Imam Bukhari rahmatullah alayhi, the hadith he has narrated, the first person who will go in the hell will not be Zani, will not be murderer, will not be Mushrik, will not be Kafir, rather one of the Alim. He used to give lectures, dars, khutbah, writing books, but whatever he was doing is just for fame, just to get in appreciation. He will be the first one going in the hellfire. Second one, Shaheed, he went for jihad, but he wanted people to appreciate that he is a brave man. He will be the first one going in hell. And the Sakhi who was spending money day and night, my brothers and my sisters, we do our actions, we give our sweat and blood, whatever we do in this life. The purpose of this khutbah is protect your deeds, save your deeds, <coughs> expect the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on that day. Don't sell yourself cheap. My brothers, this is the message and that's why Prophet Muhammad 
reminding us be watchful be watchful of shirk e asghar be watchful of shirk and this shirk is a riya i pray to allah subhanahu wa taala that he gives you me this tawfiq that whatever we do in this life we do it for allah subhanahu wa taala and let me clarify one thing here before i will close sometimes you want to do action and after this khutba is this thought may come in your mind you know i am doing it for riya maybe i am showing off let me hold off let me postpone let me cancel my action that is a waswasa of shaitan the solution is you continue what you are doing and you will try to correct your intention visit your intention and correct it but don't give up on the good action that you have intended just because of this waswasa of shaitan that you are doing it for show off so there will be no reward so no point of doing it wallahi that is another trap of the shaitan that he can catch you and me so we should be careful and watchful of that and you can do multiple intention in one action you have come to masjid i'm going masjid for salah i'm going masjid so i will meet the people the slaves of allah subhanahu wa taala i will greet them i will just do give salam to them that will be another reward i will go in masjid and as long as i will sit in masjid i will make intention of etikaf so i will do etikaf even if i am for in masjid for 10 minutes you can do multiple intentions for single action my brothers and my sisters